a young age i am someone who has suffered from you know a depression and anxiety it started with something simple as having stress for exams i met various psychologists uh, the medicines definitely did not work for me so from qatar i was taken back to india because india has so as a part of that you know i had three seizures anxiety more anxiety more depression i had sleeplessness and uh, once you have seizure three times it is said that you will have it lifelong it was what maybe 20 years old then so you can't go on a bike ride alone you can't go for swimming you can't travel alone so these are the things at that age which you want to do right you want to explore everything you want to go out with your friends but you can't do that your doctor tells you you should not do anything you should always have someone accompanying you when things were getting hard i decided you know i will go and stay in the ashram engineer psychologist and a sadguru volunteer Our guest today on the Settle or Be Better podcast is Mr. Vaisak Sabu. He's going to be talking to us about emotional well-being and a lot more. So, welcome, Mr. Vaisak, and over to you. Why don't you begin by telling us a little bit about your personal health and well-being story and your current work? Thank you so much uh, for you know inviting me to your podcast. This uh, really feels nice because you know I saw that you have a lot of awesome guests, and I hope I can add some value. At the same time, it feels. Uh, a little bit odd and nice to be on the other end of the podcast because usually i also record a little bit podcast and usually i'm the one asking questions so it feels nice at the same time a little bit odd but thank you for the opportunity uh, so why don't you begin by telling us a little bit about your personal health and well-being story and your current yes i'm basically a content creator at the same time i work in a travel agency also uh you know whenever someone asks me what am i doing it, it sometimes it gets very confusing for me because in my mind there's a certain thing that i'm trying to do so basically what uh, allowed me to do this seeking this this one particular book called autobiography of a yogi by yogananda paramsa um it is the first book that showed me you know spiritual seeking there's something known as uh, seeking spiritual seeking a guru because in my mind till then i had only heard about fake gurus making you know adventuring people or uh, what is spirituality it's very bumbo jumbo to me people talk about chakra as energy all this stuff so i'm like what the hell is this it's a very uh, gray area um, but it was the first book that showed me there is something known as kriya yoga there is a practice that you can do scientifically in your room and uh, if you keep on doing the practice you you know you go forward on your journey first and the most book that has always touched me so when i'm on this path i have met a lot of people like uh, yogananda paramsa so for me in the modern world uh, my podcast is basically document those people's journey and how they found their guru or how they found a spiritual practice for themselves so i'm just trying to recreate autobiography of a yogi in my own way in my mind that is what i am doing uh, yeah so as far as uh, my journey is concerned um, from a young age i have been someone who has suffered from you know a depression and anxiety it started with something simple as having stress for exams uh because of that uh, i met various psychologists uh, initially it didn't help me so naturally at that time there was not so much awareness about mental health because i'm a 90s kid uh, so at that time you know these things were just picking up uh, at the same time i was lucky enough to have some medical professionals who said you know uh, maybe psychiatric help would be helpful so i went to a psychiatrist i was at that time in qatar my dad used to work in qatar so i met a psychiatrist who told me you know you if you have a certain kind of pills it should be taken away so i was prescribed some medicines which i used to take regularly at the same time uh, what i or my parents did not know was you know i have nothing against medicines or not it helps a lot of people and definitely you know the modern medicine is very powerful but at the same time psychiatric pills have certain side effects and certain people may go through the side effects of that so i was maybe the unlucky person for whom the side effects was more prominent than you know pills help with me so as a part of that uh, i had seizures three times like once i was watching a movie and the next thing i am remembering is i am in a mri scan and they scan my stuff with a splitting headache so the the medicines definitely did not work for me so from qatar i was taken back to india because india has abroad you know in qatar the medicinal facilities is not as good as it is in india so luckily my parents took me back to india so my studies and all continued over here but still uh, i was just put on an alternative version of the medica- indian version of the medications and that also did not work for me i would grow very anxious and this is a part of psychiatric medicines that you know most people don't say and i'm just saying that i'm not against medicines or anything 
but just i'm just sharing my experience because you know some people might associate with it because maybe for them along with psychiatric medicines they might need a support system in some other form of healing or something that is why i'm just telling this because most psychiatric pills have a side effect that you know they can actually increase your anxiety they can actually increase your depression not everyone faces that but a few people like me do face it so i'm just sharing it so that maybe you are one among the few who might be going through this so as a part of that you know i had three seizures anxiety more anxiety more depression i had sleeplessness and once you have seizure three times it is said that you will have it lifelong the effect of that is you know as a, i was what maybe 20 years old then so you can't go on a bike ride alone you can't go for swimming you can't travel alone so these are the things at that age which you want to do right you want to explore everything you want to go out with your friends but you can't do that your doctor tells you you should not do anything you should always have someone accompanying you so i was like what the hell <laughs> so then what happened was luckily in my college uh, there was one professor who understood you know something is uh, this wrong with me so when my parents came to talk to him about my issue he told this a psychologist um, you know why don't you consult him so we went to consult that psychologist he is he was a clinical psychologist he was the first person who told me you know you necessarily need not medicines you can heal yourself without medicines i did not trust him because at that time we had met all the best doctors in india and in hand whatever you name it my parents had taken me there because for them uh, their son their son is suffering and they can't take it and i would like to add that you know most people think uh, it is a person who who's going through the mental health who's struggling and the awareness is regarding mental health and supporting but i would like to add to that as much as that is important the people taking care of someone going through a mental health issue it's a, it's a next level thing only because something you can't see your loved one suffering you suffering you are you are. but when you see a loved one your child suffering it's a it's a different ball game only is what i feel and i bowed down to my parents you know for uh, handling me yeah so then they took me to the psychologist and he was the first person who told me you know, medicines might not be needed uh we did not trust him because like i said we had met all the best doctors in the country but my dad said why not let's try anyway we are here i was also like acha anyway what's the lose anyway i'm not getting anything out of taking medicines but uh the kind of person i am is even if i do not believe or disbelieve something when i when i do something i do it fully i do not do half heartedly so he had given me certain therapy certain relaxation techniques you know which uh, stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system that's what i understood from what he told me certain simple exercises which i would do lying on the bed very simple it look very simple it doesn't look like i'm doing anything i'm just lying down and doing some crunches some little bit breath work and all that but believe me i had been taking my psychiatric medicines for 4 years and i was told i would never be able to stop it within 4 months i was able to stop it and that is kind of like a, a a little bit of like a miracle it is not a miracle now i know now we think it's a miracle i i but it is not because our body definitely has a certain healing mechanism and it can definitely go but definitely the therapy and the practice given by him aided in that and why i'm saying it is a miracle is most of the people who are tapering from their psychiatric medicines do not know that the psychiatric pills have a you know withdrawal symptoms so when it's just like you are taking alcohol and alcohol addict when the alcohol is removed from that person he goes he goes through a withdrawal symptom and at least the person knows that you know it's the alcohol that is causing his anxiety and depression what happens with psychiatric medication is when you try to taper it off your doctor most doctors don't tell you that you know if they may have a withdrawal symptom so when the depression and anxiety comes back you know the person feels oh my disease is coming back but when it is actually not the disease it's just that your brain is used to so much chemicals from outside it is used to that so when you suddenly withdraw it it is going through a so these are things that i later realized because i later because psychology helped me so much and i understood there is something going on i read a lot of books on this pills and how they work by other psychiatrists because i'm not a doctor and uh, and i'm i don't like google searching also google goes here and there so i like to read books a lot so i buy i wrote, i bought books i bought books from us psychiatrists and i would read and about from all these authors and that's how i realized you know there is something much more profound with our body and our system and you know we actually do not need so much of psychiatric medications yes it's needed but for a very small amount of people who are not able to manage at all trust to all like like a kid like when i look at me i was just what 15 year old kid going through exam stress me being given so much medicines i i do not think that was needed actually when i look back at it it was a kid having issues it's not a big thing because i i was not only having study issues i was had a lot of issues regarding the color of my skin because i was in a boys school where the girls would like me how to talk to girls you know as a young kid so many issues so rather than dealing with all that putting a pill in a kid is a very easy process i think that was not the right way to go about it but 
it, it is what it is and right now i'm here because of that so that's how the journey uh, yeah till there aga and i decided to become a psychologist you mentioned i'm a psychologist but that's why degree okay. only i completed the course in gujarat and uh, when i went there i was very confident you know but there were a lot of pretty girls over there to be very honest and i come from a <laughs> boy school then i went to mechanical engineering where they were all uh, you know guys and then suddenly i went to a college where there were girls all around i'm uh, and i fell in love with the girl and uh, that did not work out then backfired my on a lot you know my entire anxiety depression all came back and i was like what the hell i did not i'm not able to be with a lady that i like that doesn't mean it should be the end of the world because i was getting suicidal tendencies i was getting very anxious because of all this I'm like what is this too because i had become a little bit overconfident i think you know i have killed myself i'm good but i became i became humbled by life i think and i realized you know i am still not doing the right things there is more to life um why is it so hard um, everyone around me are so happy they are they are having multiple girlfriends they are having they are drinking alcohol they are drinking smoking and i have not done any of this i have not smoked i have no i am doing what society thinks is right i am a nice kid i am following my parents advice but i am so sad and depressed what the hell so i became a bit humbled <laughs> really humbled but at the same time when something doesn't work i am very honest with myself i am like it's not working because i used to read a lot of self help books i used to read a lot of this thing i used to uh, you know and like i used to hit the gym i used to go swimming but i was very honest with myself this is not working for me it is working for all people all around me uh, all these things but it is just not working for me and i need something much more deeper so i completed my course um, and i had got admission for mphil in clinical psychology in amity because the psych- uh, the psychologist who helped me was also a clinical psychologist so he said you also do it it will help you to give therapy to other people and it's a degree that is good and definitely uh, clinical psychology i was helped by someone like that with a very you know human approach to the mental health field that is why i'm sitting here so i thought you know i could also be that person for someone else so when i got the call letter for that again i got anxious and stressed i don't because i think it just kicked back from a young age i had this fear of studies that somehow got ingrained something maybe that just popped back at that time and again i was this is nothing big i just need to go to a new place and not even that much just finish the admission call but stress anxiety again coming back thinking about the future i was always in the future or the past i was never in the you know like what's happening because my brother's wedding was happening right then i was to call my friends and i'm not able to do that i think uh, yeah that's when uh, i used to read uh, <laughs> now i talk about uh, my volunteering and some groups entry uh, into my life i know uh, like one of my very close uh, friends you know who has a similar story and uh, who also happened to have been on uh, anti anxiety meds for a lot of years and what you talk about withdrawal right i mean i can relate so much to right. that because just this these last two uh, months we've been talking and uh, you know uh, he was like i'm not feeling like doing anything at all i mean there's nothing out of the box happening in life nothing bad really is happening but it's all going in this one pace and i just don't feel like doing anything. there's just no energy and then he happened to mention that you know uh, i just stopped having my anti anxiety meds a month back and uh, it wasn't right. uh, you know with consultation with his doctor or anything but he just felt like he wanted to but that's how it uh, led uh, to that right and I'm, it's so right. true i mean i'm seeing so many young people in their early 20s uh, having prescribed uh, anti anxiety meds because one of my uh, very good school friends also called me and she told me that you know i'm having so many of these side effects uh, with this because i'm just 23 and uh, i'm having anti anxiety meds right now and so many side effects that we don't we can't even imagine like especially for women there's just whole another right. level of side effects that they have to face right so it's crazy because uh, i feel like young people should not be given anti anxiety or you know psychiatric med the first thing the first solution right i mean there's so much more to explore of course i'm not a doctor but there's so many extreme cases where it might be absolutely needed but where it's not there's just so many layers to be explored and even if these meds are being prescribed there is nothing else being told that along with this try doing this or do do these exercises like you mentioned right so there's so much awareness because i myself luckily uh, i feel privileged that i haven't 
had that experience myself right but i didn't know about it until very close people to me uh, shared these experiences of their lives right so i mean there's so many people out there especially after covid we have had a whole change in our lives like our lives have been completely uprooted for so many people completely changed and that has affected a lot of us right so uh, so many of us are silently suffering or not even sharing these things with many people close to them right so this makes so much sense in this conversation is so important right now and also what you spoke about spirituality a lot of people just don't know what it is i mean okay yeah they'd listen to a podcast they'd, they'd probably think of they'd buy a book but they would never get to reading it and in the end it's like all mumbo jumbo like you said with the spirituality okay yeah, it's very far out there it's like maybe i want to do it when i'm in my 60s or something i'm in my 20s i don't know what spirituality yeah. i don't have the time for it yeah. I don't even have time for a five minutes to sit and meditate. That's the mindset, right? I mean, that's right. true. To for someone to find their way to what is their meaning of spirituality, how would they know that they have, uh, you know, uh, made progress in it? Is something very different and very individual to each person. So uh, amazing! Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And I can't wait to dive deep into our episode today. Uh, and please continue. You were talking about your volunteering work, and we can circle back to my question. you know even i used to think before you know i am very spiritual now i don't think i'm a spiritual person or anything but there was a time when i used to read a lot of these books like autobiography of a yogi there are so many books that you can read on you know even such those books so whenever people used to talk to me i used to repeat that and in a crowd it looks very spiritual you know very yatmi like he talks something but now i know i was just parroting something that i read in a book that is where you know a life practice has its importance it's a, it's a very yeah so i'll come to that so uh, so that's when life was uh, i went to I was at home. I was very stressed, anxious. Nothing is working. So I was reading uh, Sadhguru books. At that time, Sadhguru was there on YouTube, but somehow I did not find him. I do not know why. Because usually I'm the person. I'm, I was doing a lot of. I used to watch a lot of YouTube videos. I had a small YouTube channel then also, but uh, it was something I had started. because i had done psychology i wanted to help people but i was never honest about my journey i never used to share that i was going through depression and at the same time my parents were also a bit scared like if i shared about my depression whether i'll get a girl you know at that time it's a thing because if you say at my times if you said if you have a mental health oh is is like you know like that. that that was the idea now it has changed very good it's very beautiful now it has changed and people are openly talking about it but at that time it was definitely not like that and um, i was also not feeling very honest about the channel like what i was sharing i was again to beating something i read in a book when things were getting hard i decided you know i will go and stay in the ashram so how do i convince my parents that i will stay in the ashram because ashram means you're becoming a brahmachari that's the basic idea of going to an ashram so i told them no i won't uh, uh, i won't go become something like i just want to see i i want a solution i just want to go stay there for 3 days and come back and um, so i so i thought you know just being a i sent an email i still remember i sent an email to isha foundation uh telling that you know i saw there's a something uh, there's a, a linga form that's a dress and a jai stan kept out there it's called the dhyan linga um it is the core of the ashram so i thought you know you have to tell something spiritual uh, then only you are allowed in the ashram so i saw yes, i told uh, isha foundation in the email you know i saw the dhyan linga in my dream <laughs> can i come and uh, uh, visit the ashram <laughs> this they said you just need to book a room and come so okay, i was like okay that's it okay so i booked a room uh, i went there I stayed for three days. I thought, you know, I'll sit in the sphere of the handlinga, and you know, some light will come and touch my forehead, or something. Some experience would happen, and everything would get solved. So I reached there. I went into the handlinga. Fifteen minutes, nothing happened. I came out. Then someone told me, you know, you need to take a dip in a pond over there. Then you go sit. I took a dip in the pond. I again came all wet. Nothing happened. But somehow, taking that dip in the pond is very, very relaxing. It was very relaxing for me. So the entire day, I would switch off my phone, take a dip, walk barefoot. eat the you know it's a very good food vegetarian diet that's given there i would eat that so somehow there was a change within me because i was doing a little bit of right thing but still that was not what i was looking for i was looking for something that i can come back home and use uh, i was not looking to go stay in the ashram or leave my family or anything i was definitely not up for that uh, that's when one of my friends uh, who studied engineering with me he had certain experience he had already done the programs by sadguru and he was a hatha yoga teacher that is he was he had gone to a certain 5 month course and he was teaching yoga when he knew came to know that i am in the ashram he sent me this program link inner engineering program which why don't you attend it and i was up for it i had no resistance because at that time uh, my resistance towards gurus or 
going to a temple because for a certain part of my life i was an atheist why do we need to go to temples god is in my heart or you know the universe is this i was like here i i had given up all that thing i was like in the ashram i'll bow down to a deity i will offer puja i'll do whatever i just need a solution for my issue when he told me that there is an inner engineering program i immediately registered i did not even think anything i registered uh, i came back home and realized that it was just like 20 meters away from my home this program has been happening for a long time but i never knew about that i just went for the program i i did not have any certain expectation or anything i did not even know at that time you know you know it would help with my issues or anything i was just like okay there is something some yoga being taught let me go learn it uh on the but i think internally there was a seeking within me that you know i need a guidance i need a guru uh, this thing is not working for me of reading self help books and having a lot of guide it's not working i need someone who knows what i need not what others need what i need and it, it's it's very intuitive what each of us need individually is very very intuitive to us right the kind of life we are going through the kind of traumas we are facing the kind of parents we have it's very very unique to us so only someone who can you know knows the entire thing about how the mind body emotions energy works can you know give us what we need so somehow deep i realized you know a guru is not this from this realm is is something is a different kind of person is is something that you know it can give us what we need very individually like sadguru says he can pack your cocktail with a punch the guru can pack it so i needed the right cocktail for me so i went for the program and uh, seven days just went by and i was doing nothing i was just doing some simple yoga practice nothing big like when i look at it there was nothing big happening but videos were being played some practices being being taught but i was getting what i wanted all my questions were getting answered like all the questions whenever i used to ask my parents or someone adult or it was all philosophy it was all a belief system it was all a morality someone had a morality someone had a belief system someone was like money is the thing someone is like love is the thing someone is like no spirituality is the thing so everyone had an idea of what but here it was very logical i was getting answers uh life and i understood that i am the one who is complicating my life life is very simple if you keep it simple if you do the simple things you can actually live a very profound life and in those seven days i just had a u turn like from a very stressful and anxiety state uh, one day i was sitting and eating my food i'm like what the hell happened here like uh, I'm, I'm, i'm very happy nothing big is happening i'm just eating some sambar and rice and i'm very happy as if you know i won a lottery i'm like so happy I'm like what the hell and that's when i realized you know there's something very profound is happening in the program which i can't put a finger at there is something much more than what the eyes and uh, ears and is meaning there is something much more because i i know it from experience now no one needs to tell me even if someone tells me this program is stupid and everything i know because 27 years of my life i've done everything that i knew my parents have done everything that they knew to make me work but here in these 7 days nothing big happened but i got totally transformed this thing has been to make this reach a lot more people uh, especially youngster now i am old i'm 33 years but when i i think i was a little bit young at that time 27 so the idea at that time was to reach a lot more youngsters i'm trying my best it's now it's not getting successful as much but i think i've been able to touch a few more lives to you know do the program and it's a blessing when uh, i am at the yoga center or some place and uh, very young kids maybe 15 16 year old kids come and give me a hug and uh, yeah it's very good they are tears in their eyes and it touches me a lot when you know, because i have not done anything to be very honest i just make videos of me going here and there or taking podcasts but when they when i see you know it touches me a lot because i wish someone like that was there for me so it's a uh, it's been clearly <laughs> that's beautiful like the work that you're doing right now it's just beautiful and no matter how less you think that you are contributing to there's so much more to it and i'm sure that there's so many lives being touched through it right now so thank you for sharing that was really beautiful and you know uh, talk about spirituality that we've just been uh, talking about is that uh, what would you say to people who are in search of that certain something i wouldn't say spirituality because the moment you say the moment you ask today someone if you ask that you know like are you into spirituality it's almost offensive to a person like no 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 i am not into all of that you know it's it's that yeah, but yeah. many of us are searching for that little something which it's not in front of us right now we want something to guide us and we are looking for some of the other answers right 
So what would you suggest is the starting point for people like that who really want who like you have read many books you know they are into this they're really out there putting their curiosity out there and seeking knowledge in any way that could help them it, it has also helped them but there's just still something that is missing out of you know what what would really help them uh, in the long run right so what do you think is something that they can do to begin with that might help them find the path that they very true because even uh, i would say that you know the spiritual it is something not a spiritual ego you are doing a practice you have a guru so you are a little bit high you know that 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 gets in so that was there within me also but uh, you are having an authentic spiritual practice it will break all this stuff it will put you through life situations it will grind you you might think you have become very spiritual you are doing a lot of practice life situations will come which will take you down and you will have to rework all your entire because you know even with spirituality it, it can tend to become like a, a religion a rigid but if 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 there is a life guru he'll make sure you know your ego is like taken to the ground so uh, regarding this also ga like whether a person is spiritual or not i think there is no person who is not spiritual it is just that you know uh, all of us right from our childhood you know i wanted the next playstation i thought this playstation will give me happiness when i got that playstation i thought no no it's not true. if i have the most beautiful girl i'll be happy if i have a lamborghini i'll be happy so all these people everyone whether you are rich or poor you are all all of us are really spiritual it's just that we have not und- we have not become aware of the fact that this need to fulfill ourselves is not with these things but with a certain other dimension of life so it's just like if you are hungry if you try to put a brick in your mouth it's not going to take care of your hunger right you have to put food in it then only your hunger will get satisfied similarly the spiritual longing within you needs a spiritual practice because it is if for most of us we are living in a very logical world to be very honest definitely going to a temple and standing like this is not going to work for us let's let's be honest with that it is not unless we experience it unless we see we are doing something and it gives us a certain experience then only we we understand okay there is something more So that is why I think people feel so confused. People think, you know, going to a temple. People go to temples for all different reasons. You know, we get, we go to check out women also. There are women coming very beautiful sarees. We would like to see. People go to temples for all the wrong, right or wrong reasons up to them. <laughs> so just because someone is going to a temple does not mean he's spiritual. Sometimes if you're spiritual, you go to temples also. Just because someone is outside doesn't. So you can't categorize something like that. So for me, I would suggest after all of this experience and reading books, I would. the very core of it is i think yoga yoga is a kriya yoga practice that is basically a, a yogic practice is the scientific approach of uh, you know approaching spirituality and that is the most best way for people in this generation to approach spirituality is my method that is a step by step process is given to you it's just like science if you take two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen if you mix it it becomes water if a scientist mixes it it becomes water if a fool mixes it also it becomes water that is it can be replicated by anyone who does follows the process right you do not put your own mind you know you just follow the process so basically to advance in your spiritual stage in life you know you need a spiritual practice and doing a spiritual practice does not mean you need to go to the himalayas or you need you can't get married or you can't have a girlfriend or you can't booze or you can't smoke or you can't eat on which no it's not any of that it is just that when you do the spiritual practices the longings for all this stuff might reduce a bit like you might want a lamborghini just to show off your friends but now you are okay with the mercedes benz because you know that is enough for you that is the only difference that makes it's not that your love for cars will go or your love for maybe you want a lot of girlfriends in your life but now you are like i just need one lady who takes care of me who i can take care of so you become very open to life you understand what is it that you need so the spiritual practice can definitely ground you it can definitely make your life even more beautiful like you will get you are so fulfilled within yourself because as a person i know i was i was not very fulfilled so i was looking for fulfillment in all the things i do in the movies i watch the things i buy is to buy a lot of stuff but when you are very fulfilled you only buy what is needed for you and isn't that what the world needs right now we are facing an ecological crisis we are facing so much issues but who is causing it we as humans so only of each one of us you know are very conscious very aware that this is what i need i'm happy with this i do not need to become a celebrity i do not need to become an instagram influencer or be put I, i'm happy here i just need this i need my job or i need to be this then the world will become a very beautiful place so the spiritual practice will definitely give you a lot of fulfillment you know because whether it's happiness whether it's joy it's a certain chemical composition in your body you're happy if you take a test there's a certain chemical composition if you're joyful there's a certain chemical composition then if you're angry there's a certain chemical composition a yogic practice will 
change you in such a such a beautiful way that you know your entire chemistry is changed and this has been scientifically proven also there are various research work by harvard and all these universities on this yogic practices so it's not a certain mumbo jumbo where a low in cloth guru or someone who is very dirty with you know jatas is telling no it's a very scientific process it's a very beautiful process and um, doctors engineers scientists housewives kids everyone everyone do and who does it they'll get the same benefit don't you want to be a happy person don't you want to be a joyful person that's a simple question if you don't want any of that definitely don't do any of this if you want to remain angry if you want to remain stressed if you want to blame someone else for all your problems then then this is not for you but if you are someone who is living in this world whether you are a robber also you want joy when you rob something no so if you can joy you might not rob you want to experience joy and if you want to just do anything playfully you need to have a little bit of happiness in your heart so a yogic practice i would suggest the ideal thing like i won't say sadguru or anyone just i would say there are various practices i would say you experiment with something you know you experiment it if it works for you you adopt that if it doesn't work for you you leave it even with sadguru's practice in the range it work for me maybe when you do it it doesn't work for you don't do it it is not working for you that is not the thing for you this is not a dogmatic religion it's not a something like you do this like that no if it works for you you use it. don't you just throw it away so that is what my suggestion would be was looking to you know begin on this process right of course understood i mean i am sure that sometimes the spiritual practice can just mean to bring more awareness uh, into your life right now because we just live day in and out uh, doing the same thing going to work coming back home without probably even feeling the emotions we are feeling or you know uh, we don't have time to sit with ourselves at all right so sometimes i mean when we say spirituality there's just such a big picture that comes into our mind that like you said i need to leave everything and just do that and uh, i have to restrict my life in certain ways but actually it's about opening up to many more experiences and to bringing a little awareness to uh, to everything in your life right now because a lot of times we have already achieved the goals we set for ourselves say 5 years ago but we don't even notice that we don't even celebrate that little thing and we just go on with what is the next thing you want it's never going to be enough for us right like i said that yeah. uh, about the car example right i mean it's never going to be enough the more money we have the more we want to uh, spend it the more ways we find it to spend and then we again we want more money so again we want more of these material things right so i think it definitely lies between uh how you perceive happiness how with how much are you satisfied and how much awareness do you really have of what you have in your life life right now right? so uh, that's amazing and that's a great reason a uh, compelling reason for someone to begin with their practice because it's not a hard and fast rule like you said it's very individualistic you need to go out and experiment with yourself and it this makes it a lot more easier that uh, it can be done along with whatever doing in your life right you don't have to leave everything or to completely transform your life to go on a spiritual path right it can be as simple as being in your room and having your own practice so uh, that's amazing thank you so much for sharing that and you know talking about when you were going med free uh, from your psychiatric meds what were some specific things that you started doing i mean was there anything specific that alongside with it you started doing so that it would be easier for you to uh, get off them and to sort of ease into your life and your routine sleep a very active you know lifestyle is something that is most underrated and eating healthy you know it's very simple actually you know my mom dad used to sleep early wake up early i wouldn't do that you know eat little more veg food you know i wouldn't do that do exercise i wouldn't do that i think unknowingly i did these things when i was in college i used to play a lot of basketball because even when i still remember when i was taking a lot of psychiatric medications the only thing that used to give me a certain relief was i used to play a lot of basketball with my friends that was the only time i was very relaxed and everything so a lot of these mental health issues can be avoided simply by if you sleep properly if you are having getting that basic amount of sleep if you eat a little bit of healthy eating healthy i, I don't mean by saying you avoid all junk food and you go all satvik no so you are just pushing yourself in the other direction you'll go satvik for few days and then you'll you know binge eat no majority of the time you eat good you, you also go you are a social being so you need to go out with your friends when they eat something you need to eat at that time you're saying i am satvik i don't eat this that so and why you get unnecessary has you It's, it, it, everything should be happening in moderation like this is what i also take from sadhguru so always says you know rather than following all the big things calorie counting this that if you just show a little bit of gratitude towards the food you eat that you know certain beings have died for you to come on your plate the very way it behaves in your system will change when you're very hungry sit for a minute without eating food you know whenever we are hungry we are like ah uh, like that no but when you're very hungry just wait a few seconds and just bow down to your food 
then the very way it behaves in your system will totally turn up so these are simple things like even before you drink water you know have a gratitude for that water because it's coming into your system it is being a part of you so and at the main thing uh, i would suggest learning a martial art or having a sport this is very important like i'm right now going to learn kalari so it's so grounding for me because you know we practice kalari under the ground level. the kalari is always set up below the ground level so we're going below the ground we are on the soil barefoot we do kalari practice so after a session of kalari it's like i'm very fulfilled i don't know why like it's not like i'm t- i'm tired but i'm very fulfilledly tired and i think having a kalari whether you are a man or a woman having a martial art it's not for beating up someone or leaving in the idea you know someone is going to grab me no just having a martial art itself is a very beautiful way of you know grounding yourself so having a martial art learning a sport or maybe you are into cooking dancing or you know whatever it is having something like that is very important at the same time the most underrated thing i feel is having a very beautiful community around you so having people who understand having people with whom you can talk about anything like let's say anything you're going through whatever shit people who don't judge you on the basis of their morality i think that is the very underrated stuff for me i personally feel you know being on this spiritual path being on being on this path having a guru is a very it's it's not a it's not actually a very easy thing it's a very tough thing because you have to keep on looking yourself you have to keep on breaking because you know i do a lot of volunteering and in volunteering this is what sadhguru says you know when you come for volunteering if you find a person you do not like make sure you work with that person if you see there is an activity you don't like you make sure you do that activity and that's hard that is very hard but that is the idea of volunteering right because in your life in your job at your home you are around people you like even if they say something you don't like you get angry you do this but when we are volunteering we need to make things happen and there there our likes dislikes don't matter we have to get it done so we have to work with people we don't like and do the things we don't like by volunteering you know we might have to roll i have volunteered with ceos maybe even billionaires i might not know they will roll carpets they will clean toilets and because they are coming with a sense of offering it's not them there anymore they are coming to break certain things within them so there me vaishak they agree i am a youtube this thing nothing we will clean toilets we'll do anything that is required to make a certain program happen so i think uh, that is just a beautiful feeling because in the world also i've noticed everyone says you know the job you do uh, you should not judge people on the job they do on the amount of money they make but let's be honest it is not like that depending on the dress you wear if you wear a good clothes if you wear well fitted clothes if you have a gucci bag if you have a nice car people naturally give you respect i have noticed this and i am not saying i am also aware from it when i see someone very good looking beautiful i immediately associate oh he's very well dressed and all so that natural judgment is there within all of us so while volunteering it's a very easy way because you you might see person in rag clothes but he might actually be a billionaire there we, we don't know but he will be doing the simple he might be keeping chapels he might be doing and uh, he will also treat us like this he won't think you know we are some young kid or some this thing but he will give us equal respect he would say namaskaram to us and please let's do this together so having such a community having a such a place where everyone are treated equally everyone are doing what is needed is very very i think it's a very it's a very beautiful to experience it in one side to i think everyone should go through that everyone should experience that you know people are not judged on the job on the amount of money on when the color of their skin on the language they talk on the this guy thing it is it is it, it the whole world should be like that but definitely let's be real it's not like that so we should go to places which are like that so that we can understand you know if we want we can create such spaces for more other people that's yeah, very true okay. it reminds me of a quote that wim hof recently posted uh, i'm not sure i'm saying it right but it was something like no ego we flow right i mean that's something right. that a lot of us have a ego somewhere or the other right no matter how matter uh, we how much we uh, try to be non judgmental or uh, you know somewhere or the other in some situation it does come up and in the end it's only us who gets affected towards the end of the day the other ones having some regrets of that day or you know uh, some regrets of how we behaved in a certain situation so i'm sure like what you just said is something that would create so much space for better things in our life if we could just tone down the people who might be carrying along with us right so uh, that makes so much sense and you know uh, it's amazing that you share about how when you recovered from depression and anxiety but i'm sure that there's some days still now that you might be triggered by something or the other you might have a very low d and you know uh, i'm an nlp practitioner myself so i know that there's some other layers to it also like we might have some physical anchors uh, set in our body uh, which get triggered or even uh, environmental anchors that we don't even know what it means but it takes us back to a feeling uh, a situation in our life which was very at a peak 
uh, negative emotion and you suddenly feel so bad that day you don't know what the reason is right so what is it that you do on such days uh, and you know how do you pick yourself back up when you have uh, you're triggered by something or the other and you face these low days because we all have them here and now every time and suddenly life when life is just going so amazing one of these days you'll be like it's just not going well <laughs> you know uh, i don't know what i'm doing i'm stuck in this cycle so what do you do uh, for yourself personally of course it's again very individualistic people need to find something for themselves but these conversations again help someone or the other uh, to probably get a clue somewhere or there right so what do you do on such a so definitely aka so the thing is like when i did energy when you, when you do anything new and it works you know there, there's a certain high with that it takes you a certain thing so when i initially did the program i was like this is it now i won't find there won't be any sad day there won't be any anxious day and it was like that for a month okay nothing used to bother me no matter what but like you said certain things start happening and then i realized you know there is more to it it's just not you know you do this and you are like 24/7 happy because i was of the idea being anxious being depressed is a very bad thing because i was suffering a lot it is later i realized that you know these practices they are not they are for me personally i'm saying my experience they are not that you know i'm like i won't ever experience anxiety or i won't ever experience depression or anything it is just that it is building a very stable foundation for me which i never had it is building a very stable foundation where happiness and joy becomes the majority part of my life but at the same time like you said a lot of situations can happen in one's life where things don't go i know you know my mind is definitely not in my control it is going here and there so i decided you know i will start doing coloring so i went i started consciously i made the effort you know even though i did not want to wake up in the morning because when you're going through a breakup or something you don't want to get up in the morning i did not want i just want to lie on bed but i consciously made the effort to get up and go for that i was doing my yogic practices regularly the time i'm doing the practices definitely for the next 20 30 minutes there's a certain relief nothing has happened but after 30 minutes again the thoughts come back what what is this happening so i realize you know i need more so i start going for them then there is a certain advanced program at isha called bhava spandana program it is a program you know as being a psychologist i i realized you know with being in therapy myself i realized you know even for a small trauma to be taken care of it takes a lot of years for some people you know but in this program there is a certain possibility that you know it can just get clear like what has been bothering you for a long time which you are not maybe it's just a anger against someone someone it can take care of. so i needed i realized you know i need to revisit this program again because any of the spiritual practices we do we are always told you know do not think you have to got phd that you revisit it again and again whenever you need it in life so i personally decided to revisit that program so i went to the yoga center it's a the three day program we keep our phones away and we are just volunteering in the program and uh, after that i just felt like you know it was it, i just came out as a new person i it no longer bothered me you know it is very easy to have feelings of resentment against the other person um, feelings of why they did this to you or why 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 this happened or like that happened you know i'm sure the other person also has that towards me i'm not saying i am the right person in this or anything but the very idea is when something has happened you need to feel okay like maybe you are saying oh i don't have resentment but within you there's a lot of resentment you know it is a certain poison but that needs to be taken care of if that is not taken care of no matter how successful you are no matter how even if you get into a new relationship it is just not going to work you're just going to be stuck up in the past so i definitely needed to clear that for myself so this program definitely helped me in that but i would say it was the coloring practice that you know and uh, that definitely gave me that grounding because where i went for coloring he was my college friend uh, his name is uh, don so he was someone who has gone through his own struggle he was a chronic alcoholic and you know his doctor told him you know if you have a little more alcohol you'll die so he stopped everything and uh, he went to um, to a guru and learned coloring for 3 years and he set up his coloring so going to him being with him and he someone who has also gone through a divorce so just being with him and talking to him as guys you know we um, you might have noticed we don't we are not so open about our emotions we might we just try to you know but it is it is not like that it is just that i personally feel if we are guys, if we guys are around other guys who are equally vulnerable who are equally open to talking about stuff we open up it is just that we do not find other guys other guys are no 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 just hit the gym just do this just do that but it is i don't know whether it's totally like that maybe for some guys it works it was definitely not me i think i'm a little bit more feminine in nature so i like to talk about my stuff and i think a lot of guys are feminine in nature the feminine aspect is very strong with them and being feminine it doesn't mean like you know i'm a girl is like no it's a certain i think in every female also there's a masculine and feminine so i'm a little bit more feminine guys so i like to talk about my stuff and this so luckily uh, don is also very like a 
is also in a certain kind of sadhana and i and this is what i understand when when you are a guy when you are doing it to a certain kind of sadhana you come in tune with your you are okay in accepting your feminine stuff most of us guys do not accept that feminine part of us so when you are accepting everything within you know healing i think happens it, it happens it becomes a very beautiful process so for me also this journey has been like that and one thing i would like to share is you know initially um, when i started making podcast i used to uh, take this video camera and tell people like, you know what is your experience of inner engineering and i expected that my experience would be there as so they also had a very beautiful experience and most people would be like yeah it's a bit it's the best i can come out of this that once i was actually recording a video with this one guy uh, i was a fortnite and he was sharing yeah it's a beautiful experience everything is good yada 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 and then when i ended the camera i was like you know what i'm feeling very stressed i feel like running away from the ashram i don't know why things are not working for me at this point so that's when i realized you know this is a very uh, what am i making uh, why am i trying to promote something because sadguru has never told us to promote anything he has just he's never told like you know he just said you do and see if it works so i was like i have to make this in a much more genuine way like right? so next time when i invite a guest i tell him you know if you do not like inner ring please tell that the yoga practice has not worked please tell that i'm i'm looking for genuine i'm not trying to promote anything or here because everywhere someone or the other is trying to promote something someone is trying to promote their product and not i'm not saying it's a bad thing but uh, i think uh, with the spiritual practice it should not be that because you know people are genuinely seeking this is we are trying to address a genuine core concern within them and at least here we need to be genuine if we again try to promote something uh, which is not what it is then i think uh, it's a it's a disservice to the universe we are doing so that is from there i have slowly evolved my podcast and i'm very honest with myself also like whenever i feel depressed or anxious i may just take my camera guys i'm doing a lot of practice but i'm still anxious so i hope you guys are well so i've been quite honest with my journey uh, and the very idea of my social media content is it's not like uh, i post pictures of me eating you know biryani and all this stuff so i get a lot of hate ah you are eating biryani how can you do you're following sadguru I'm like Sadhguru has never told not to eat biryani or not to eat anything. He never says any of that. But you know, people have this thing of categorizing even Sadhguru or a spiritual practice into certain belief systems they have. So my very idea of that is, I'm not trying to break their belief system or anything. I'm just showing this is I am I'm, I'm someone with a spiritual practice, and this is how I am living. At the same time, I'm documenting other people also who are you know on their own journeys. So yes, that is how it goes. At right amazing i mean that's true right this is very real i mean this is one of the most realest conversation i've had in the other 90 episodes that we've recorded till now right i mean and it it shows like from whatever you say whatever you post about and it's that's how it should be it should, it's very unfiltered right i mean because a lot of people who in the health and wellness space would show only the best part of their day you don't know what is happening in the other hours you would see a person I don't know. Not just an influencer, of course, influencers do that. But others, even who are doctors or like, you know, like real health medical professionals, also if they're talking about something, it's just one aspect. You cannot control what uh, life situations you might go through, and you cannot compare that to somebody else's, uh, you know, uh, part of the life that they post on a daily basis. So it's very important, like you said, to be first of all. It's not even about being honest to others, but to yourself, like you said, right? I mean, it's hard to uh, ach- uh, like to you know accept it to yourself. Although I have done so much work over the years, but still I have some anxiety. Still I have some right, some right. of these issues and. you like you've been doing it for so many years but it's it's hard to even accept it to yourself right so it's so important to do that uh, thank you so much for sharing that and it brings us to the end of the episode today it was an amazing episode i really enjoyed it and i'm sure our audience can also feel uh, how honest and genuine this conversation was and the insights that you gave it's it's very uh, relatable right for a lot of people uh, who might be going through similar life situations it's not very filtered it's not it doesn't have any layers to it you've shared some everything so honestly and uh, it will definitely help someone or the other who's listening to this so thank you so much once again for being here today as we continue do you have any last messages or thoughts to leave us with? very happy in our life it's not so hard you know like this i would like to share this one thing you know when i attended the inner engineering program the one thing that really touched me is like in the introductory class you know the teacher tells us you know what is being offered here 100 years ago if you want to find a guru you would actually have to leave everything You would actually have to leave your parents, your family, your wife, your kids, and you have to go in search of a guru. You might have to go to Himalayas here and there, and most probably you would not find a guru. You will most probably die this lifetime. You might have to, in our Hindu tradition, we'll take again rebirth. So thousands of rebirths, you might not find a guru. 
let's say in the heart in the very rare sense that you find a guru he's going to put you through 12 and a half years of rigorous waiting and then only if he feels that you know okay you are ready to wait then only he will initiate you to a simple practice but right now that is being offered online very easily you just need to go it but many people still have this thing but why is yoga being offered why are why are they charging money is charging 3000 rupees for a program but we need to understand this you know most of us what we need a nice hall we need air condition we need a sound system we need place to park our car someone or the other needs to pay for this right like if let's say sadguru comes with a very good please give me money will give it no so it is better you know a certain amount is charged because we take some amount because there are various layers of the program you know in the rural villages of tamil nadu it's being offered for free the program is entirely free and and the people there are like that also very devotion the devotion is the core aspect of them devotion doesn't mean they pray to a deity or like you know they are devoted that every morning if you look at them their tractors they will bow down to their animals they will bow down to the field they will bow down they will bow down to anything that is the amount of devotion within them so for them just the start of the program only they will blow away for a lot of us in the cities it is not like that when we are going for the program we are like who is this baba ji let's find something wrong with him it's not the, there must be something so we are in a enquiry you know in a detective mode that we go for most of this program that is why i'm sharing this you know do not let uh, money come in between uh, you and the spiritual practice do not think you know something is fake just because money is being asked yes i understand in today's world you might have been duped a lot even when we go to a shop we are used to bargaining we are like how can we get the best deal but when it comes to this aspect of your life you know you this you owe it to yourself there is something deep within you which is yearning for this you owe it to yourself to give yourself a try on any of this i'm not saying sadguru maybe it's sri sri ravishankar whether it's sri am or whether it's moji i don't know who are authentic you know you deserve it to take a certain I, w- i won't even say break from your life most of these people offer even if you are a working person you can go to any of their programs and try to and i i genuinely hope you know why are you earning so much money so much thing to take care of everything so spend some money or some time of your life to see if there is something to it if there is nothing at least you try it you can live with that right but please don't go for youtube videos of people who i watched a lot of youtube videos someone said bad about sadguru sadguru has killed so many elephants or you know rain for us no okay maybe he has what's the harm i'm not saying in that way but don't let all of the things stop you from checking it out for yourself don't listen to youtube and youtubers or influencers like don't get influenced by this video also is what i would say you have to owe it to yourself to go and check it out and that would be my last thing that i would like to say right. that was amazing that is true i mean like you said don't even just judge everything on this one video that you are seeing right now because you should be out there and experiencing this for yourself it's not something you would even find in the books or through someone's words it's something very experiential you'll have to right. go out there make a little more effort and you know experience it for yourself and that's how you will really feel like you are doing justice to the process right so that was amazing that's a lovely message thank you so much for being here mr sir and it was an amazing episode a very genuine conversation once again <laughs> thank you thank you so much thank you for calling me Thank you so much for being here today. And for the ones who don't uh, follow you, there'll be a link in the description below. They can reach out to you, learn more from you, and see your podcast also. Uh, whatever you post about in the future. So thank you so much uh, once again for being here today. Thank you.